Welcome to the second module of the Debug Tools, Tips, and Tricks for LPC-1100 and LPC-1300 families of ARM Cortex-M microcontrollers. This module will cover code read protection. The previous module covered ISP and valid user code. This module is mostly independent of the first, but you may want to watch or review module 1 before proceeding. The LPC-1100 and 1300 families of parts support code read protection. This feature can be used to ensure that access to internal flash memory is restricted, thus protecting intellectual property. CRP is enabled at System Reset by the on-chip bootloader. It can be configured in several ways by placing one of several key values at a specific memory location. Be aware that it is possible for your build environment to place arbitrary code or constants at this address, which can inadvertently enable CRP. If CRP levels 1 or 2 are accidentally invoked, you'll have to use ISP to erase the device before you'll be able to do any serial wire debugging. The no ISP mode is new to the 1100 and 1300 part families. Should you choose to enable CRP as a means of preventing design theft, field updates should also be taken into consideration. If you've taken the time to prevent people from accessing the flash memory contents, you probably don't want to release unencrypted binaries to end users for updating either. Thus, you may want to consider implementing an encrypted flash loader using IAP commands from inside of your application. This table details the different levels of CRP. Notice that all active CRP modes will disable serial wire debugging. The new no ISP mode can be used. For example, if a system has an external device which drives the ISP pin, in the event of a brownout, watchdog reset, or user controlled reset, it is possible that an external device could assert the ISP pin. This would prevent the part from executing user code when it restarts. Also notice that no ISP does not restrict access to flash memory. CRP level 3 requires very deliberate use in its invocation. Once CRP3 is enabled, there is no built-in recovery mechanism. This will effectively prevent any future debugging and the ability to update contents of flash memory. It is highly recommended that designs intending to make use of CRP3 implement a recovery flash loader using IAP commands and test it thoroughly prior to deployment. Refer to the application note listed below for more information. The next few slides will illustrate the recommended way of developing a project on parts with CRP features. Even if you don't intend to use CRP in your application, without properly ensuring that CRP is disabled, you may inadvertently find that debugging has been disabled. The general strategy will be to control the linker to ensure that the desired keyword is placed at the CRP memory address in Flash. This illustration shows how memory will be laid out in the following examples. For users of IAR Embedded Workbench, only a few modifications of the default ICF scatter file are required. Notice that the ROM section has been offset until after the CRP section. This will ensure that no code or constant data will accidentally be interpreted as a CRP control value. You'll also need to define a constant in your application, which will be placed at the newly created .CRP section. In the example illustrated here, I've chosen to disable CRP. This example code shows how the variable should be declared. 
I've also captured the contents of the resulting binary file. You can clearly see that the vector table is followed by the CRP value of all Fs. In the Kyle environment, edit the appropriate startup assembly file and define the CRP symbol with your desired value. In my example, I'm using Cafe Food, which is not a registered CRP constant to ensure that CRP is disabled. Here you do not need to declare a constant in the body of your application. The same strategy used for IAR applies largely to LPC Expresso. Start by configuring your project to use a manually controlled linker setup. To do this, you'll want to refer to the application note listed or simply use the example CRP project which is distributed with LPC Expresso as the starting point for your next design. Once you've configured your linker, you also need to declare a constant to be placed in the .crp section. This example code illustrates how this is done in LPC Expresso. I will now quickly demonstrate how you might use CRP in a project. I'll be using LPC Expresso as my IDE, and I will target the LPC Expresso 1343 Evaluation PCB. For this demo, I've made some minor modifications to the CRP project included with LPC Expresso. These changes are mostly superficial, but they'll allow me to more easily illustrate a side-by-side -side comparison of binaries that enable or disable CRP. They do not affect how CRP is used in practice. I'll be making use of the LPC 1343's USB mode of in-system programming. To enable this mode at PowerOn, I've installed the default jumpers on the LPC Expresso baseboard, and I will assert the ISP pin via the bootloader enable push button. Remember that when using USB-based in-system programming, you must ensure that your binary images contain a proper CRC. I've done this using post-build actions inside of LPC Expresso, which I will detail later. Notice that the CRP example makes use of custom linker scripts. I'll start by going over some of the minor changes I've applied to the example project. First of all, I have two different project configurations, one called debug no CRP and one called debug CRP2. The differences between these projects is that one defines a preprocessor symbol, which is used to define the value of the constant that will be placed in the CRP section. I've also added some post-build actions that will ensure that my binaries have a proper CRC in their vector table, as is required by USB-based in-system programming. If you're targeting an LPC 1100 device without USB, you'll want to generate hex format output to program with Flash Magic. In this case, I'm still generating hex files because they'll be easier to diff I'll start compiling both of my configurations. Next, I'll inspect the resulting files. I'll diff the two hex files I've created. Notice that there is a single difference. I'll also confirm that there is a proper CRC in the vector table. To program the device, I will assert the ISP pin while resetting. Notice that the volume name is CRP disabled. 
I'll delete firmware.bin and copy my CRP2 enabled binary. This is an easy way to navigate to the output folder from LPC Expresso. I will now reset the device and continue to assert ISP so that I can inspect it on my host computer. Now the volume name has been changed to CRP2 enabled. The volume contains a firmware.bin file. I'll inspect its contents now. By switching to the hex editor, I can confirm that code read protection has prevented access to the flash device as the file contains nothing but zeros. This concludes the second module of the debug tools, tips, and tricks series. With it, you should be able to successfully implement code read protection in your designs to prevent the theft of your intellectual property. In the event that you don't want to use code read protection, you can make use of a modified scatter file to still ensure that it is not inadvertently enabled. To learn more, follow the links listed below. And as always, thanks for watching.